Well, that's an interesting turn up for the books today. Uh, October the 19th, the chief exec has given this sort of maiden policy address. Uh, it's a work in progress as we speak, but he has um, laid out some enhancements to our immigration policy, which are designed to both attract foreign businesses to Hong Kong and also prescribed talents. We've apparently had 140,000 talents leave Hong Kong. That'll be a mixture of foreign nationals who were here providing uh, assistance to our economy prior to the riots and obviously COVID and then obviously the local uh, young people have left about 110,000 I think we've lost over the last two or three years um, to jurisdictions such as Canada, Australia and especially under the BNO uh, program so uh, all good stuff uh, gonna all go well for Hong Kong so what has he said what have we got well um, there's going to be a new government bureau set up specifically to uh, provide uh, support to international enterprises from uh, certain particular sectors that are deemed to be attractive to Hong Kong and form part of our economic devel development policy roadmap um, and uh, they're going to be active both in Hong Kong and overseas. They're also going to reach out to uh, the top 100 universities in the world to try to fish for talent from those universities. And um, also there's going to be uh, the establishment of a kind of a co-investment fund that will facilitate uh, attractive propositions for uh, businesses internationally that are in certain sectors to come and get themselves set up in Hong Kong and obviously facilitating the um, um, talent that are, will be necessary to uh, give effect to the underlying policy underneath those plans. So uh, that's kind of like the big picture, attractive uh, intention, if you will, attention to attract. What have we got? The immigration department are going to enhance uh, some of the existing immigration programs, which I'll detail now and also introduce a new program called the Top Talent Pass Scheme. So what have we got in terms of enhancement to the existing programs? Well, under our general employment policy, and the admission scheme for mainland talents and professionals, the immigration department are going to be granting three year limits of stay uh, out of the starting gate, as opposed to the nor normal two year limit of stay. Uh, moreover, if uh, an applicant under the general employment policy or the top talent, um, excuse me, or under the admission scheme for male and talents and professionals is a, uh, a professional that is on the talent list. She's presently found in the quality migrant admission scheme. That's going to be updated by the end of this quarter, by the way. But if they're uh, in one of the 13 employment sectors in the top talent list and they can show that they've had a 2 million Hong Kong dollar prior year salary, um, there will be no requirement for the testing of the local labour market in relation to those applications for that status. So uh, interesting update in terms of the admission scheme for male and talents and professionals and also the general employment policy. Secondly, there are going to be enhancements to the quality migrant admission scheme. This is the um, the top-notch talent, uh, as Tom Chi Wai once quoted it, scheme that uh, has been struggling, I think, in terms of its overall uh, objectives down the years because of its limited scope and the qu quota and the amount of time that it uh, usually takes to get approved under that program. Well, the enhancements are they're going to remove the quota, so it's kind of open to all comers which is interesting, and also that the process is going to be speeded up. So that definitely gives us another uh, arm to our immigration processes that will enable uh, visas to be had uh, and get talent here uh, more quickly. They are also going to do an announcement to the Technology Talent Admission Scheme, which I always thought was a bit of a dog's breakfast. It still is because of the fact that it's kind of like anchored to um, the uh, research organizations, institutions that are government accredited in Hong Kong. But one of the um, 
killers to that program, in my view, in terms of the wider accessibility and availability to most businesses, the fact that there was a kind of a contingent recruitment, local recruitment component to uh, that program. So that's now being removed. So that's all good. Another enhancement under the immigration arrangements for non-local graduates. This uh, now means that all fresh graduates, these are uh, those who have student visas, have finished their uh, formal course of studies as a recognized tertiary education institute in Hong Kong and have uh, started seeking to move into the workforce, they can secure a no questions asked. It used to be one year uh, employment visa under the immigration arrangements for non-local graduates. That's being up two years. So uh, that's an enhancement as well as the um, Hong Kong University Greater Bay Area campus, which is in Shenzhen, I believe. Uh, uh, graduates from that campus now can automatically qualify under the immigration arrangements for non-local graduates. Uh, that's a new addition. So that's good. So the newcomer on the block is the Top Talent Pass Scheme. So what this basically means is that if you're of a particular professional standing, uh, you can come to Hong Kong and get a two-year visa without a job offer. Essentially, you need to have graduated from the top, one of the top 100 universities that are listed as part of the Quality Migrant Admission under that program, um, provides uh, extra points for qualification for qualification under that scheme. But um, if you have graduated from one of the top 100 universities and in the last 12 months you've had a mean average salary, salary of two and a half million Hong Kong dollars uh, and you've got three years post-graduation working experience, then you can qualify for a no employer required employment visa under the top talent pass scheme and there's no quota associated with it. So uh, those are the bare bone details that I've got at the moment. Uh, the government will be releasing more details over the next few days and weeks. I'll update my website and uh, the Hong Kong Visa Handbook accordingly once we know what the uh, nitty gritty of it all is. So that's it. Good news for Hong Kong. Uh, good news for immigration practitioners too. Lots of new stuff going on. Lots of no advice to uh, impart uh, um, plenty, hopefully, of new people to assist.